Okay, so what we want to do now is a three-variable example of Lagrange multipliers. Here's the theorem. I want to modify it. So everything I changed so far was the two written here to three. So what's a three-variable example? So f is now going to be a function of three variables. f of x, y, z. And the extremal point is going to be a point of the form x0, y0, z0. And it's an extremum subject to some constraint of the form g of x, y, z equals 0. Again, a c1 function of which the gradient does not vanish. Then there exists a scalar lambda such that the gradient of f plus lambda g at the point x0, y0, z0 is 0. So that's what the theorem looks like. Having written 0 here as a vector means I don't need to change anything, but now it's the 0, 0, 0 vector, right? Everything's in three variables now. And how many equations are we going to have when we use this theorem to, to do an example? We're going to have four equations, exactly, good. So one is going to be the equation uh, g equals 0, meaning the points we're looking for satisfy the constraint. And the three other equations are going to come from this line. The derivative with respect to x, the derivative with respect to y, and the derivative with respect to z all have to be equal to 0. Okay, good. Let's do an example. So, example, let, we're going to have three parameters in this example, a, b, and c, and a is greater than b, is greater than c, and all of them are positive. So these are just parameters. Um, find, find the minimum and maximum of the target function f of x, y, z, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, subject to the constraint, right? If I just told you find the maximum and minimum of this function, that would be easy. It has a minimum, it's 0, 0, 0, and it doesn't have a maximum, right? But we're not interested in that. We're interested only at points x, y, z that satisfy a certain constraint, and the constraint is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals 1. Only points which satisfy this. That's the constraint. Okay, and the way we're going to do it is use the method of Lagrange multipliers. So we're going to get a system of equations Let's write the system of equations. There are going to be four of them. The first one is going to be fx plus lambda gx has to be 0. fy plus lambda gy has to be 0. fz plus lambda gz has to be 0. And g has to be 0. That's the constraint itself. This is the system of equations that we have. If we know what it is, what is g going to be? So let's write this system which we here wrote. In general, let's write it for this example. And let's start by writing what g is. There, then we can find all the derivatives. So what is g here? How do we phrase the constraint in this way? Exactly. So we're going to have g is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared minus 1 equals 0. That's the bottom equation, right? Now let's write all these three originating from the Lagrange theorem, the gradient of f plus lambda g being 0. So what's the derivative of f with respect to x? 2x plus lambda. What's the derivative of g with respect to x? 2x over a squared. Does everybody agree? And from, since everything is very symmetric in terms of the variables, except for the a, the b, and the c being different, let me quickly write the other ones. 2y plus lambda 
2y over b squared has to be 0, and 2z plus lambda 2z over c squared also has to be 0. So these are the four equations that I have to solve. Four variables, x, y, z, and lambda. Four equations, not linear in this case. Okay, not linear. Good? Okay, how do I solve them? Again, any way you want is fine. Usually, it's good to take a step back, look at it, and see if there are symmetric phenomena happen here, happening here that you can take advantage of. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pull out a 2x from the top equation, pull out 2y from this one and 2z from this one. Okay, so let me rewrite this system. It's going to be on the next board. On the next board, 2x times 1 plus lambda over a squared has to be 0. 2y times 1 plus lambda over b squared has to be 0. 2z 2z times 1 plus lambda over c squared has to be 0. And we still have the constraint itself. x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared uh, equals 1. Do you agree that this is our system? Okay. What are going to be the, the solutions? So in order for each of these to be 0, I have two options. For the first equation to be 0, either x is 0 or this thing is 0. And this thing can be 0 by choosing an appropriate value of lambda. Right? If lambda is minus a squared, then this thing is going to be 0. Do you agree? Likewise here and likewise here. But, but, since a, b, and c are different, remember the, 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 the data for this problem was a is greater than b is greater than c is greater than 0. So they're different. So lambda cannot take care of more than one of these at once. Do you agree? If lambda is the reason that this thing is 0, then this is not 0 and this is not 0. So in any event, either x, y, and z are all 0. That would solve these three. Or two of them are 0, and the third one is fixed by lambda. Do you agree? OK. So we have the, the, the candidates for being solutions are either x is 0, y is 0. That solves these two. Z is not 0 because we're going to assume that lambda is minus c squared. So how are we going to find what z is? We're going to use this equation. So x is 0, y is 0, so z squared over c squared is 1, so z can be either plus or minus c. Do you agree? So all of these points solve all four equations. Similarly, 0, 0 for x and z, and then the y being plus or minus b. All these are going to be solutions, both of these. And plus or minus a, 0, 0, these two are also going to be solutions. Finally, we can have x, y, and z all being 0. That would solve these top three ones. But that contradicts the fourth one. If all three are 0, this equation is not satisfied. That point is not on the constraint. Okay, So that's not a candidate for solving our problem. Clear? So we have six candidates, six candidates, right? Everybody with me so far? Again, by Weierstrass sort of arguments, what, it, what is the domain, by the way? Do you know what that domain is, x squared, this thing? What is this thing? We discussed it. A Not a ball, close. Uh, ball. Exactly. This is an ellipsoid. Do you agree? Remember we discussed these quadratic surfaces? This is an ellipsoid. An ellipsoid, ellipsoid is a bounded, closed uh, domain. Okay, we're, we're only looking at, at the, 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 the faces, the face of the ellipsoid, not the, the inside. Okay, so it's a bounded and closed domain. By Weierstrass, f is continuous on a bounded and closed domain. It has a minimum or a maximum. Therefore, these are our candidates 
we just have to calculate the value of f at each one of them. f is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So which is going to be the maximum? Both of these are going to be the maximum, right? Because when we plug in a is bigger than b, it is bigger than c. So these, these two, these are the maximum. And these two are the minimum, because c is the smallest. And these are nothing. Is it clear? Okay, I didn't write the Weierstrass justification again, but it, I said it. Clear? Is it, is it clear what happened here? Let's say it geometrically. I claim that we could have solved this thing without knowing anything about Lagrange multipliers, about constraint extrema. We could have thought about it and figured it out geometrically. Let's look at the problem again. Well, we, we have to know that this is indeed an ellipsoid, right? And we know that, we've discussed that. So this is an ellipsoid, a quick sketch of one is something that looks like, um, remember our melon, something that looks like this. Remember the ellipsoid? I drew it very small. So we're looking for points which maximize or minimize this function only along these orange points on the ellipsoid, right? What does this function measure? Does this function mean anything? What if I added a square root here? Would it mean anything then? Exactly. This function measures not the distance from x, y, z to the origin, but the square of the distance from x, y, z to the origin. Do you agree? F measures the square of the distance from x, y, z to the origin. Does everybody see that? Okay. If you look at points on the ellipsoid, I'm, I'm going to make the ellipsoid slightly bigger. If you look at points on the ellipsoid and you ask yourself, well, having the square of the distance being greatest or the distance itself being greatest is the same thing because the distance is positive. So which points on this ellipsoid are furthest away from the origin and which points on this ellipsoid are closest to the origin? Answer. A is the, is the X component here. So these two points are furthest away. Do you agree? And C is the Z component. So these two points are the closest. These are the points A00 and minus A00. And these are the points 00C and 00 minus C. Do you agree? Everybody? Good? Okay. I drew it incorrectly. Do you agree that I drew it incorrectly? Because, well, I can relabel the axes and then it would be correct. But um, I drew these points on the y-axis. Okay, so we're going to have to call this the x-axis. And this is still the z-axis. And this is the y-axis. And now I even did a, a more serious uh, mistake because it's not a right-hand system. It, it's a... Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, man. So, so this, okay. So is the idea clear? Okay, the, the, the point is that this melon, I drew it the way I wanted to picture it, but it's actually like this. This is its long axis. Do you agree? So this is in, very, in a very tricky perspective. The melon is lying, if this is the melon, it's actually lying like this rather than like this. Clear? So this drawing is, is uh, not good picture. But the idea is nevertheless clear. I don't want to erase it and draw it again. Is it clear what happened here? Okay. So 
in general, it's not, it's not always going to be the case. In fact, it's a unique situation where you can actually figure out the geometric meaning of a certain problem like this. Many times problems would originate in, 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 in applications where they come from some meaningful situation, but the solution does, doesn't, the, the, the uh, mathematical solution using these Lagrange multipliers doesn't require in any way that, um, that you understand the geometry behind the problem, for example. Questions? Yes? I didn't quite understand like the maximum and the minimum. Like for example in the drawing, I know it's a bad drawing, but I would like expect, let's say in this drawing, there would be 0 0.0.c and 0 0.0 minus c. That would be the maximum and minimum. And here's like... Both no, 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 no. It's not the, the highest point and the lowest point. It's the two points closest to the origin on this ellipsoid and the two points furthest from the origin on this ellipsoid. F measures distance from the origin. We're not measuring elevation here. We're measuring distance from the origin. These two points are furthest away from the origin on this constraint. And these two points, both of them, are equally closest to the origin on this constraint. Clear? Good? Okay. So what I, what I want to do next is to uh, outline the idea of the proof of the theorem on Lagrange multipliers. I'm going to do it for the two-variable case, and it's, it's in fact not very difficult. It's kind of neat. So that's coming up next.